We um, are speaking, we're in a series called uh, Prospects of Inheritance. And, um, you know, it's just this season that we're in, just this, this word inheritance has been pretty big uh, in our lives. And, and as Pastor Tori and I have just been thinking and praying about what God has for us in the future, and really all of us, no matter even Pastor Ryan in April, as they move forward into what God has called them to. But God is God something for each and every one of us to accomplish, to do, to be used by Him. And, and, and it takes faith. It takes hope, a trust in, in, in His ability because, of course, we can, we can do, you know, things on our own power and our own, you know, feet can get us so, so far, but, but we need Him to walk forward in this life with power, with authority, and, and, and with his wisdom, just as we've been praying, as we're praying for Pastor Ryan, that, that those, those things that, that we need, not just to get by, but to do great things, the things that God has called us to, we, we need to understand what our inheritance is and understand what, what we need and what we need to do in this life to, to just really be used and and called and used by God. And, and so um, today I want to be, I want to talk um, really about our capacity and that, uh, see, God doesn't have limits, right? And we all know that we read, you know, like all this stuff what the Bible talks about, and it builds our faith and, and all this stuff. But, but so many times we can put limits on what God does. And I want to talk about that, some stories in the Bible. But, but I believe that God's just speaking that to, to us, to, to his people, and not just this church, but just to the Big C Church, the church across the globe, that, that we need to expand our capacity. We need to expand the, the ability that we have to take in what God has for us. Because he doesn't have limits, but we can put limits on him. And, and, and he's, he's saying, don't do that. He's saying, I want to do a mighty work. I've done mighty works in the past, and I'm going to do greater in the future, but I want my people to be able to handle and to hold the greatness that I have for my church. I, I need you to have the, a capacity, not just a little bit, but, but a great capacity for my spirit, for the, the move of God that he wants to bring about in, the, in this next season. So he says, expand your borders, expand your capacity. I want to first start in 1 Peter 1, starting in, uh, in verse 4, and it says, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. I love that. There's a priceless inheritance it's beyond the reach of decay. It's a, it, it, it doesn't fade away. It doesn't lack. It, it's, it's not bound by any kind of capacity. And, and, and it's, oh, gosh, we look forward to what God has for us, to the inheritance of being with him forever after this lifetime for, for the greatness of just spending time daily with him face to face in heaven. This is amazing inheritance. But as the scripture goes on, it says, and through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be reveal, revealed on the last day for all to see. And it says in verse six, so be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. I mean, we get excited about, woo, this inheritance, this, this great blessing of God, this, this inheritance that we get to receive as we, as we know God and we come to the end of our lives and it's, oh, this amazing thing, but we just don't like to see that part about living this life, right? That there's difficulties, that there's struggles. But I want to talk about that, that 
these things that we walk through, if, like, I just think about, if I never, if we never had to deal with anything that put pressure on us, or that hurt us, or that, that caused us to, to sit back and think about how much capacity that we have, how would we know? How would we know how powerful God is? If there was no thing in our life to cause us to trust Him, to cause us to have faith in who He is. And so just as the scripture is saying, He says, there's a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. That your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. He says, this, these trials that you go through, it's kind of like gold when it's being, you know, brought through the fire. You know when they, anybody ever watch those shows like I do, you know, the ones that are a little bit boring but so intriguing, you know, you just watch the gold melted down, turn to this molten lava gold thing, but then you see the, the slag, I guess is what they call it, this, the dirt, the impurities rise to the top, that, that this gold has to go through a process in order to be purified, in order to become what it's meant to be, without the impurities be, being in it still. And that's what's being spoken here, is that these trials, these things that we walk through in this life, it's like putting us through that fire, that pressure, those issues, those things going on in your life. You know, there's two ways to look at it. It's like, my life is horrible, or God is doing an amazing thing in my life by purifying me, by, by cleansing me, by, by making me all that he wants me to be. Not that he necessarily caused the issue, but that he can cause the purifying and cause the strengthening in the trial. That he can bring us out of that trial, that situation, the other side being so much stronger than we ever were before. Because if you wouldn't have gone through that thing, how would you be strengthened? How would you be purified? How would you, you know, know that God is on your side, that he's real, that he's a good God, and that he has great things for you? How would you know? So I think of, uh, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, most of us probably know this by heart, by faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, I think about this scripture, and I think, you know, when my dad actually, you know, preached about this a year, long time ago. I don't know how long ago. I mean, he's been preaching for so long. He's really old, you know. He's not here. I can talk about him as much as I want. But he's, he's, he said this statement that, that hope is the capacity for our faith, or the, the container is what he said, for our faith. That this hope, what does the hope mean? Now, nowadays, hope means something kind of different than it did before, but the archaic definition is to trust, to believe that something's going to happen. So hope is the trust and believing that God is going to move in our lives, Right? So our faith is based on our trust and our belief that God is going to move. It's the container that our faith goes into. And so my question is, is how big is our container? How much capacity do we have for our faith? How much do we trust God? 
because he does not have limits. The only limits are what we put on him. So we, if we think about some situation or a thing going on in our lives and, and, and these trials and, and this pressure or this sickness or these different things that, that I, I think about, God, you, you have no limits. You, you have no lack of ability or no lack of strength or anything. There's no lack in you, God. But the only thing is if I can handle what you got for me. If we can handle the things that he's wanting to give to us or wanting to do in our lives. And and I think about that, and there's many stories in the Bible. We'll talk about a few of them. But I think about, in 2 Kings, the woman that that her husband died and, and she's running out of money. She had no money. Her husband left her in debt. And so she comes to the point where she cries out to the prophet, in 2 Kings 4.4, 4, it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha. Now, first of all, the sons of the prophets were these guys that were like, hey, they weren't necessarily actual sons. They were, they were people that followed the prophets and said, hey, we want to study under you. We want to follow God's call on your life and, and learn and glean from what's, what's going on, that, what God is doing in you. So this guy, he, he knew God. He, he was searching after God's heart and, and, and following the prophets. And, but there was an issue that in that day there was so much struggle and Jezebel was killing the prophets and, and she, was, she was just putting the pressure on, right? The whole, the whole region, the, the, the world was in turmoil and there was a struggle in that moment. And so he dies. And his wife and two sons are left with with nearly nothing. So she cries out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Now, I, I... as I read this, I, I, I think about, why, why do you say, what, what shall I do for you? And I don't, I don't think that he was like, what do you want me to do, lady? Like, what are, you, what are you thinking coming up and asking me? I don't think he was thinking that. I think he was, he was kind of testing her question or her coming to him saying, what do you want me to do? Are you just wanting me to throw money at you? Or just, are you coming to me or are you coming to God? Are you just looking for a handout or are you looking for God to move in your life? And he doesn't really give time, at least in the the scripture, the way that it said to answer. And I believe God just spoke to him and said, she's coming to me. So he said, tell me what you have in the house. What do you have? Look, I I love this. So, so many times we, we come to these situations in our life and it's a struggle, it's a trial, there's things happening and we're like, somebody else has to have something to help, help me, you know? Ever, somebody give me something or, you know, I'm sure somebody else has more than I do and I'm just going to go ask them. And, but that's the thing. God was like, no. What do you have? And so many stories in the Bible, right? The same thing happens. I mean, you look at Moses and and. And God's like, what you got in your hand? I just got a stick. I've got a rod. God says, go ahead and use it. Throw it down. I'll turn it into a snake. Hit the rock. I'll bring water. Do whatever. But what do you have in your hand? See, he didn't, he didn't tell him to go, to go out and, and seek after whatever somebody else had. God just said, use what you have in your hand, and I will bring the power. I will bring the miracle. I will bring what you need. You've got what you got. You've got what you have in your hand. Just see that I can use it. What is your capacity to see the miracles of God happen in your life? So he says, what do you have? She says, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Just one little jar. Just got a jar of oil. And I see it in that moment like, she 
said, I just got a jar of oil. And he's like, just a jar of oil? Or is it, you've got a jar of oil? You've got something for God to use. Like how many times in our life is like, I don't even, God, I've got nothing. What are you going to do in my life? I'm, I'm struggling here. And we don't see, even if it's just a small thing, it doesn't matter. Because in God's eyes, it's not just a small thing, it's something that he can use. It's something that he can bring his power and his authority into to sustain or even to bring a miracle, not just to sustain, but to bring blessings and everything that you need in your life. She says, I just have a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. I love it. Borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, these empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it out into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Go and collect all the vessels that you can. And he even stated, he's like, don't just collect a few. Collect as many as you can. Don't just get four or five jars. Go. Go and collect vessels. Go and collect jars for God to use. And the interesting thing in this, in this story And in many stories in the Bible that I see is that God moved according to the capacity of her faith or how much she trusted that God would move. Now, she went around. She collected a bunch of jars, right? She collected lots of things. This, I mean, they may have been bowls, jars, and, and water pots, and whatever else. She went around and collected them and brought them into her house and shut the door. And God filled those jars. But what if she had gotten more? What if she hadn't stopped getting those jars and got more and more and more and more? Then how much more blessing could God have given to her? Huh. We need to have a faith like this. I mean, this woman had faith and she went and got, look, she even, she got jars. She didn't even question Whenever he said, go get jars, like you've got a jar of oil, go get more jars that are empty. And I, I, I'll admit, I could have sat there and thought, okay, but I've just got a little bit of oil. There's just a little bit of oil. What am I going to do with all these empty jars? But she just went out and did it. And he said, whenever you... Get in your house and shut the door. Start pouring that oil that you have into those other jars, and God will do a miracle for you. Verse 5, it says, So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. See, are you going through something? in your life? Are you going through a trial or a situation where it's like, hey, it may even be a debt collector, somebody coming to take things away from you, right? She had her sons right there, and that's all she had left. And she said, they're going to be taken away, my sons. It may not be a debt collector. It may be something else, just this thing in your life that feels like it's ripping you apart, sickness or anxiety or all these different things. But, but God says, look, can you trust my integrity and my power and who I am to multiply what you have, to move in your life so that you don't just have this one little jar of oil, but I can fill them. I can, I can do the miracle. But how much will you trust me? How much do you think that I can do? In James 1, 22, 
It says, but be doers of the word, and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. I don't want us to forget what kind of men and women we are. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, see, if you're just a hearer of the word, if you just kind of like, oh yeah, I heard this great word, but I'm not applying it in my life. I'm not actually walking it out. You know, I yes, God can do anything. But then I turn around in a situation and then all of a sudden I'm like, God, where are you at? I just, you never move in my life and you just don't ever do anything for me. We don't trust him. We don't step out in those situations with faith. Moving forward, knowing that he will take care of us, but we just hear the word and don't do it. It's like a man looking in the mirror and forgetting what he looks like when he turns around. You know, I think about, it's like, this is the word. I can hear it spoken. I can read it for myself. But if when I turn away, I forget what it said and I don't do it, if I don't do it and put action to the things that it's telling me, it's like forgetting who I am. I don't want us to forget who we are. We're children of God. We're children of the King. We're heirs. Remember the scripture we talked Heirs to the kingdom. Christ died for our sins and not just so that we can just live an okay life, but live in the fullness of who he is. So if I take and I look at this scripture and I'm like, oh, it tells me that God is for me. He's not against me. It tells me that I am strong in him and that his spirit is in me, ready to move in my life. And I turn around, I'm like, I, what? I can't remember. I can't remember. And I don't do what it says. And I forget who I am. I forget that I'm a child of God. I forget that I'm strong and that I'm a conqueror, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It says, don't be like that man who looks in the mirror and forgets what he looks like when he turns around. When you turn around, be a doer, take action, have faith, trust in the integrity of who God is. What is your capacity? Because God has no limits. In 2 Kings in verse 6, now it says, Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. Okay, so you, you can, let me paint, paint the picture for you here. She's got a bunch of vessels. I don't know how many there were. Maybe she collected a hundred, a lot, right? She had her one little jar of oil and she collected all these other jars so that she could pour this one little jar into, having faith that God was gonna do something. But she gets to a point that her, okay, so her sons, she's, she's standing there. She's holding the jar of oil, pouring it out. And, and one gets full and the son takes it away and the other son brings a new jar. She's like, give me another jar. And she's pouring and pouring and pouring. Give me another jar. Pouring and pouring and pouring. And give me another jar. And the son goes, oh, we don't have any more jars. We filled all the jars that we collected up. And now we've run out. And you know what the scripture says? Her son said to her, there's not another vessel. So the oil ceased. The oil didn't cease because God didn't have more oil. The oil didn't cease because God could only do a partial miracle. Or because God didn't have enough, the oil ceased because she only had enough jars to fill that amount. I mean, think about that with me. If she would have gone out and not just said, you know, maybe she was scared. 
because the, the, the debt collector was coming to take her sons. So she hurried up and went to the houses around her, maybe, maybe you know, a handful of her neighbors and collected these 50, 100 jars or whatever. And she's like, but now we need to go home because the debt collector is going to come. But are we going to let fear hinder our capacity for the things of God? Because I know that, that the prophet told her, don't just collect a few. Collect as many as you can. What if she would have gone around the city or not stopped as soon as she did looking for jars? What if she had collected not just, and I'm making this number up because it doesn't tell me, but what if she had not just collected 50 or 100 jars? What if she had collected 1,000 jars or 2,000 jars or 3,000 jars? What if she had the capacity for God not just to, to multiply 100 times, but to multiply 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 times? Because God doesn't have limits. His only limits is the capacity that we have to be used by him. Hmm. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Look, it's not that God didn't move enough for her to pay her debts. He did. Her debts were paid. She even had enough to live on. There was God moving in her life and, and, and taking care of her. But instead of just getting her debts paid off, instead of just having some money left over to live on, what if she had gotten more? What if her capacity to trust God and to believe that God would move was greater than what she had collected the jars for? What if she had collected more and all of a sudden it wasn't just that she had money to live on, but that she was the most wealthy woman in the, all the land that she had more oil than she could possibly, could possibly comprehend because that could have happened. That could have happened. She could have filled more vessels if she had them because the scripture said that when she ran out of jars, the oil stopped. It doesn't say that the oil stopped before the jars were filled. I, I look, I'm just telling you the scripture. Now think about, look. What, what about the times whenever Jesus was, was out there ministering to people and they get hungry, right? Everybody gets hungry. I'm hungry. I want lunch. But you're going to have to wait a little bit, okay? But what about those times when they're like, the people are hungry? And he said, well, what do you have? Again, again, what do you have in your midst? What's, what do we have right here? Jesus, there's, there's a handful of bread and some fish. One time it was, what, five loaves? Another time it was seven loaves. Thousands and thousands of people. Five loaves, seven loaves, some fish. So Jesus blessed them, he prayed for them, and, and, and I love that in those stories that he handed those things to the disciples, and, and the miracle of multiplication actually happened in their hands. What God used and multiplied was in their midst, and he used them to multiply it in their hands. And you know in those stories, you go to the end and it says, and there were baskets full. There were baskets full. And I love this because I, you know, I don't know about you, but I think, what if they didn't stop breaking the bread? Yeah, we've got seven baskets. We have more than enough. But, but what if they didn't stop? Because I believe that God would have kept moving and kept doing the miracle as long as they had the capacity to understand what God was doing. As, as, as much faith as they had. What if what they're like, I mean, we've fed everybody here, but why don't we go ahead and feed everybody in this city 
or the country? Why don't we just go ahead and keep tearing the bread and, and passing out the fish? And all of a sudden, we don't just have a couple of baskets left, or a hand, I mean, a lot of baskets left. But, but what if we go and just feed every single person with this miracle that God is doing? What if we have not just a limited capacity for God to move, but we allow him to move freely in our, in our capacity, our borders, our, 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 uh, our hearts are, are stretched so much that it doesn't hinder what God is doing. Man, that's, that's what I want to see in our lives, in our day, that, that we don't see a, a, a thing of God happen and, and it stops. We don't see God move, and, it, and he moves a little bit. I don't know about you, but I've, anybody else? No, you don't have to raise your hand. Seen that in your life where you're, God, come, move, do this, this thing in our lives and bring this healing or this restoration or this thing. And, and God moves, and he starts to work, and, and, then it, and then it's, you know, that was good, but God, it was you know, it, it didn't come to completion. And you know what you think? God, why? Why didn't you do the rest? You know what I believe God says? Well, why didn't you have faith for me to bring the completion of it? Why, why didn't you have the capacity? Why didn't you prepare yourself for me to move in the fullness of what I wanted to? Because he doesn't have limits. The only limits are what we put on him. See, so many times we hinder the move or, or the, the blessings of God because we have limited capacity to believe or to trust in what he's doing. And I love this. You know, when it says this woman, you know, that the, that the prophet tells her, go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons. Why do you think that is? You know why I think it is? One of the reasons, I think, is that so she couldn't yell out to the other people, keep bringing me jars of oil because something's happening. God's moving and I need more jars. Hey, bring me some more. No, God says, I'm not going to allow you to wait till I'm moving, to wait to see if I'm going to do something in your life to have the faith for it to happen. You need to have the hope or the capacity, the trust that I'm going to do it to completion before it happens, before it starts. Before I start moving, do you have that trust, that faith that I'm going to complete it? Or do you just have faith that maybe I'll do a little something? He says, don't, don't get in the middle to have enough faith. Because when your jars run out, you're hindering me from moving. And that's when it stops, right? You know, Abraham, whenever, you know, he was, you know, talking to God about Sodom, and he's, he's like, well, what if there's this many people? Will you keep from destroying it? God's like, uh, yeah. And then Abraham's like, well, maybe there's not that many people. So, what if there's this many people, you know, just a few people? It's like, uh, okay, what if, what if Abraham hadn't stopped and said, God, what if there's just one person, one person that's righteous in this town, will you keep from destroying the town? I, I believe maybe God would have said, yeah, yeah, I probably would. But Abraham didn't go that far. He had a limited trust and faith, I believe, of, of God and what he would do. So he didn't go that far. I don't want us to only trust God to a certain point. I don't want us to only have a limited capacity for God to move in or God to do something in our lives. I want God to have as many jars as he needs to fill up. I want him to say, hey, 
I love it. You don't, you don't box me in. You don't, you don't trust me only a little bit. You've, you've gone and you've, you just collected every single jar in the whole world, you know? I mean, I know she probably couldn't have done that, but I just think about that in our lives. How many jars are we going to collect? How, how much are we going to stretch ourselves to trust and, and to, to believe that God is going to move? Because the only thing that is hindering him moving in a greater way is our faith that he can do it. Amen? Why don't you stand with me?